Hello Procedure Design World, this is part 3 of the racetrack and holding tutorial. Today it's about the calculations of the wind effects and the plotting of the wind effects and the outline of the template. So let's not waste too much time and dig into it. Back to the calculations. Line 16 calculates the wind effect at point B, which is 5 seconds of wind exposure. Line 17 calculates the wind effect at point C, which is a total of 11 seconds of wind exposure, 6 seconds reaction, 5 seconds back. Line 18, the wind at D is the wind effect at C plus the effect for a 45 degree turn. Line 19, wind at E is the wind effect at C plus 2 times 45 degrees of turn. Line 20, wind F is the wind at C plus 3 times 45 degrees of turn. Line 21, wind at G is the wind of C plus 4 times 45 degrees of turn. Then we have in line 22, the wind at H, which is the wind at B plus 4 times 45 degrees of turn. Then we get to the two points that you may at the time still wonder what the significance of them is. There is in line 23 the wind at O, which is wind B plus 5 times 45 degrees of turn. It will make sense later. Line 24 is the wind at P, which is wind at B plus 6 times 45 degrees of turn. Line 25, the wind at I1 and I3 is timing plus 6 seconds times the wind plus 4 times the effect for 45 degrees of turn. Let's look at that on a time axis. It's easier to understand. When we calculate the wind at I1 and I3, this is based on the green plane as described above. So here's the time axis. The green plane starts at point A. It takes 11 seconds to get to point C because it has 6 seconds reaction time and 5 seconds for bank establishment time. Then it flies the outbound turn to point G where it gets affected by four times the wind effect of a 45 degree turn. Then it flies outbound, basically the nominal timing, which is T, but then it times 10 seconds too early, which means T minus 10. But then it takes five seconds for banking, and that totals to T minus five. 11 seconds at the beginning, and five seconds minus at the end, total to t plus 6 plus the wind effect for 4 times 45 degrees of turn. Line 26 calculates the wind exposure at the two late points on the outbound leg I2 and I4. If you look at this line where it says the wind at I2 is the wind at I1 plus 14 times W prime, this may not be understandable at first sight. But again, if we look at the time axis, it will be. The crucial point about this time axis is that it is referring to the blue aircraft. That is the aircraft that has zero reaction time at point A. So it calculates the wind exposure time of the blue aircraft until the late timing on the outbound leg. So the blue aircraft passes point A, flies to point B, which takes five seconds for the bank establishment time. Then it flies the outbound turn, which ends at point H, where it is again affected by the wind effect of four times 45 degrees. Then it flies the outbound timing, nominal timing T, one minute in this case. Then it times 10 seconds late and it establishes the bank for the inbound turn. So we have, at the very end, we have a total of T plus 15, plus the five seconds at the beginning, we have a total of T plus 20, plus the wind effect for four times 45 degrees of turn. Now line 26 just calculates the difference in wind effect between I1, I3 and I2, I4. And that difference is simply just another 14 seconds of wind exposure. 
Line 27 calculates the wind at J, which is the wind effect of I2, plus another effect for 45 degrees of turn. Line 28 calculates the wind at K and L, which is I2 plus 2 times 45 degrees. Line 29 calculates the wind at M, which is the wind at I2 plus 3 times 45 degrees. Line 30 calculates the wind at N3, which is the wind at I1 plus 4 times 45 degrees. And finally, Line 31 calculates the wind at N4, which is the wind at I2 plus 4 times 45 degrees. That is it for the calculations for the moment. The last two lines will have to wait until we discuss the entries. If we take Pan's Ops and look at paragraph 332232, it tells us that the influence of the wind during the outbound turn will result from drawing the arcs with centers B, C, D, E and F with the radii WB, WC, WD, WE and WF. So drawing the wind effects in a non-directional fashion around the predefined points. Paragraph 332233 3, discusses the area containing the end of the outbound turn, which is obviously determined by the wind effects at G and H. What you need to remember is that H has actually less time of wind exposure and is hence a little bit less significant than G, hence a smaller radius. 332234 discusses the area containing the beginning of the inbound turn, which is determined by the four arcs with the centers I1, I2, I3 and I4, and obviously the radii WI1, WI2, WI3 and WI4. Here is some context so far which is not actually described in the book, I just want to give you that for better understanding. So you see the red spiral starting from A going around all the windows effects of the outbound turn. Then you see the blue line which is a tangent straight line to the wind effects at G and the wind effect at I1. Then it follows the green arc which is a little part of the wind effect circle I1 and then again it's a straight line in blue between I1 and I2 as a tangent straight line. Line 3 in the template is a mirror image of the upper outline. It basically represents the drift towards the south, in this case, or to the inside of the holding pattern. Basically, you could imagine that the pilot wouldn't let himself drift further into the pattern than the actual inbound axis. Should that ever happen, he will keep the inbound axis and lock to it. Here again, line 3 may not make perfect sense at this point of time, but it will be used for entry protection later on as a tool, so it should make sense later. Then paragraph 332235 is about the protection of the inbound turn and we do that by drawing the wind effects that we calculated and plotting the wind effects at the various points. 332236 is about the wind effect around O and P points. This will be used for entries later. It may not make perfect sense at this point. The outline of the template is composed of the wind spiral starting from A going all around to G, then a straight line between WG and WI1. It follows the I1 wind circle for a short bit, then a straight line tangent to WI1 and WI2, then the spiral envelope in red all around the wind effects of the inbound turn. At the very end there is a tangent straight line between the wind effect at N3 and the original spiral in cyan color. Alright, now we have the outline of the template. There's still a couple of points to be covered and two lines of calculations to be explained. Then we need to look at what we're actually going to be doing with this template in the various cases. So stay tuned for part four of this series. Stay healthy, keep in touch. See you next time. Bye bye.